All right. Hello, guildmates. We are here with another episode of, um, well, it's a free dye clinic. And today we have Dojo Designs. And you guys are going to learn how to create an AI stencil. Um, I know it is somewhat of a controversial topic, but we will get into all of that. So we have Mr. Dojo. Hi hey, there. Hey, what's up? What's up? Thank you for uh, taking your time to teach us all the ways of the computer. I will try my best. Yes. So um, prefacing this is that you know, we're still learning. I'm still learning. I, I'm sure you're still learning as well. So um, there's just like with this thing, there is no one right way to do something. And this is how uh, we do it. And yeah. So if you have any questions along the way, please leave it in chat and um, yeah, we'll get started. All right. So I know everyone's been asking about the, the way I kind of get my stencils and the way I guess everyone thinks I get them a hundred percent correct. Um, but it's basically how I guess my way through the process and hope that everyone knows with the free stuff, you only have a limited amount of tokens. So I try to get exactly what I want in those 15 attempts. Um, or less. That's the best part. Um, go ahead. I was gonna say. So, what do you use to get your AI generated art? So, um, again, I like to use the free things because I like to try to make this work as best as possible. Uh, everyone knows it's dyers. We are trying to make it as uh, profitable as possible. Um, so, I actually use the image creator that is actually powered through Microsoft Edge. Um, both are free. Uh, and that's basically how I found them and how I started teaching myself before it was what I would deem worth going and paying for something like mid journey where it's 30 bucks a month, or I think it's like 288 for the whole year. Um, if you do like their, uh, middle of the lane package. So, and I think now that I've kind of played with it enough, um, I'm definitely probably going to go in and invest in mid journey for sure. Nice. Yeah. There are a myriad of tools. Um, and some tools are better than others in some ways for creating specific types of uh, AI generated art. But um, I know we're trying to show you here accessible and free ways that you can dabble in and start to get started so you can uh, mess around with it. Um, and again, it's the best entry way when it's, when it's free, it's for me. So it's the best way to kind of learn something at first before you get heavily invested into it. So um i know i kind of made that post on facebook and discord to see what we would be attempting to make tonight and i got some pretty cool ideas um the one i love the most and it was something uh, like love at first sight type deal was uh chaz uh doing the I believe it was the heavy metal unicorn in in space frolicking through uh galactic mushrooms or whatever and trying to get some animated faces on it um i figured why not i think that's going to be one of the best ones um and I definitely think it's possible because I definitely got some unicorn stuff. I've definitely done space stuff and I've definitely done mushrooms. So we're going to push the limits of this free AI and uh, make it work. Yeah. And I know you mentioned before, and I'll mention this again, is you see this AI work, you know, the stuff that's been produced by AI and you're like, wow, that's amazing. But it sometimes has a mind of its own. So have somewhat lower expectations and you said it perfectly. And I'll let you say how you said it. Um, you have to learn to appreciate the randomness of AI, um, because again, it, it's new, it's new to us. We haven't really mastered it. It itself still is thinking it's a computer. So it's at this point in time, it's literally an infant. So we have to keep feeding it and making it grow, uh, to the point where it's going to be at that point where we can get those exact images. We can get the exact prompts that we need to achieve those goals. Um, but right now it's it's still new and the stuff that it can do while it's still new uh, is absolutely fantastic. So once you kind of open your mind to the randomness of it and kind of learn to work with what it's producing, uh, you can really enjoy it. And um, I call it prompt engineering. That in my mind is also an art form in itself to learn yep. what prompts to use, what prompts to uh, leave out or add to make sure it doesn't add certain things. Mm -hmm. um, so it definitely is an art form and a lot of experimenting to find out what works. Yeah, um, I've definitely learned 
I've had more success putting into the prompts what it what I don't want it to do uh, than what I want it to do. Um, it, again, it's a machine. So like the more that we give it some kind of freedom, uh, odds are we could get we could get something that we actually want to use. Yes. Um, I also want to mention that I will put a link in the description uh, somewhere of all the AI tools that you can use for AI generation, as well as some starter prompts to help you get started to get the best results. I'll do that after this video. Yeah, shoot me that link. <laughs> <laughs> um, again, because so like everyone's learning. So I know Dave says it all the time on all his other podcasts or clinics or classes, and I think everyone can agree with me. Um, I, I've never seen Dave work with AI prompts. So like, I'm not seeing exactly what he's doing. And those prompts could be getting something way different than what I'm doing. So taking that information and learning and how to use it correctly, uh, sharing the information is huge. So I would definitely love that. Yes. And uh, before you start, mm -hmm. everybody that's in the chat, if you want to leave, if you do use uh, AI now, what tool do you use to create your images? Just I'm curious and you can leave it in the chat, but go ahead. Yeah, I'm also very curious. Um, so, like I said, when we do the prompts, um, we're looking for things that I start off with what I don't want the AI to do. Um, and also, I'm going to say right from the beginning, quit using the word create because that's how you're getting your hands. And if you type something, the input that you're giving it is already the word create. So you're giving it the command to create something that is creating when you use the word create. So something like that uh, I've learned has helped with a lot of my prompts. So I don't know if it's, if this, I know mid journey that unlike say jet GPT, where you really describe in plain English of what you want, mm -hmm. uh, mid journey doesn't necessarily use that uh, natural language syntax. It's kind of just right. all the words that you want or don't want. And it doesn't matter if it adds, you know, the natural, filler words for English. At least that's what I found out for mid journey. I don't know if it's the same for this or not. Um, yeah. Cause I mean, I talk, uh, well, I guess I talk my bad. I type, um, I don't type in full sentences. I type in phrases. Um, something that I learned, uh, when he comes down here, like these explore ideas, try to recreate that image. And that was my practice. Um, so like when I went to speech class in college, like everyone had to go do, they tell you that literally, they tell you exactly what they're looking for when they're asking you to give your speech. Hey, I'm going to look for this, this, and this, and you're being critiqued on this. Well, okay. I'm going to give you exactly what you're asking for. And I'm going to replicate exactly that. Mm -hmm. um, so same thing with images. If I want, I just find something that you want to look at some kind of simple picture, whether it's a, a painting of Van Gogh, well, look at that and describe it in how many words as you can, you want to give the computer exactly what it wants you're telling the cri them the criteria that you're looking for so you would want the stars in the sky or you know stars sky spacey van mm -hmm. gogh style, stuff like that um and then try to create that through the prompts as best you can and if it doesn't work then check your detail don't check the machine check your detail mm -hmm. um it's only going to produce exactly what you're asking it to produce yeah and it that also reminded me what the images below there um just if you can see what prompts were used for images that you like. Um, I know with uh, mid journey, it uses basically the discord server and you can see everybody's prompts. So you can see, you know, okay, this is working. This is what I like. Um, so seeing what other people have done and prompted and it will inspire you as well. Um, so I, like I said, I've only used mid journey. I've maybe used the Bing image creator once or twice. Mm -hmm. Is there a way to do negative prompts? like exclude uh, certain things yeah so that's actually um how i start my prompt um where it's you know if i don't want contrast no shading no background um no color and things like that so if you don't you know you you're getting into an issue where you're having you know a bunch of shading or a bunch of background and you're like man the way these colors are filled in it's just i know for a fact looking at this it's just going to transfer into one giant blob when i go to do the svg converting or however you get there I use Inkscape to trace it and convert it as an SVG. Um, but I know certain things are going to come out as a giant blob because of the shading of gradients that the image, ooh, excuse me, that the uh, machine is creating. Yes. Um, also to that, 
I will say there's a bunch of Facebook groups out there. You know how everyone has like the free SVG groups? Mm -hmm. Well, there's also Facebook groups for AI prompts. And then you start learning what they're using to get certain things. And then you kind of like, oh, well, how can, how can I get that into a stencil? Mm -hmm. So that's kind of where I also taught myself new prompts to use to get certain things. Yes, the, the Facebook groups are another good idea as well. Yeah, just yep. like, you know, that's how you find the Dyer's Guild and how yes. all your Dyer friends. <laughs> yes. All right. So we're going to go ahead and jump in. So again, everyone knows to use the word simple, because again, nothing it creates is ever actually simple. Uh, let's be real. But it's nice to put that in there because it will help with the intricacy of it, uh, of like the, what I've noticed at least is the actual image that it's producing, where if I want, you know, a dolphin or something, it's actually going to be creating a simple drawing of the dolphin. It's not going to be like this realistic dolphin that comes out, which sounds weird, but I don't need a hyper-realistic dolphin when I'm trying to make a stencil. I just need that basic outline. Mm -hmm. So simple, black and white. And again, I'm not doing full sentences. So I'm not doing simple black and white outline in a circle of um, so black and white. Um, Are you, are you crying? Uh, no. I just can't see your face. It's terrible. <laughs> it's just probably my heavy breathing. <laughs> oh, okay. With the laughter. Um, simple black and white outline. And then we're going to do no contrast, no gradient, no shading, no color. I almost wish actually I could see the chat. <laughs> uh, no contrast, no gradient, no shading, no color. Um, and then again, so now we're going to go for the heavy metal. And again, this is just me getting the first prompt to understand what could or could not happen. Mm. Unicorn. Uh, space. Galactic. Mushrooms. And then uh, digital art style. Have you ever tried um, like coloring book or? I have, but I never got it to make a difference, I guess. Yeah, I found if I had a color book, it adds it more like a childish style, like a children's book illustration. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, so obviously, you're not getting too much of a heavy metal vibe from this. Obviously, you're getting more of like a hello, you know, my little pony. Um, mm -hmm. So I probably wouldn't even I would maybe get rid of the heavy metal and not essentially shoot for something heavy metal. We're going to download that because I might use this for later. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. You can have fun with that. Yeah, for sure. And then ideally, so like I see something kind of cool from these images tonight. Um, I would even maybe save, I'm probably going to save a lot of these and then I'll share them to the Facebook group. Fantastic. Or I can even just share or download every one of them and just share them and make one big like 200 file dump. Just doesn't hurt my feelings at all. Um, so like, so when I say like, keep your open mind, right? So this isn't, you know, exactly again, something that's super heavy metal. But I start thinking, like, again, with, like, what I can do as a dyer, because this image isn't the final product of what we're creating. Mm -hmm. um, so, again, you could almost make this your heavy metal with some flames and stuff coming off it when it comes to the dyes, like getting the red and orange of the mane and stuff like that. Uh, just playing with it, knowing that it's like, man, if I keep doing these and I'm not getting the heavy metal vibe, I might have to do something myself with it. Yeah. So. I think... <laughs> A big trick is finding the right words to describe what you want. Exactly. So it's like, if you don't want heavy metal, then maybe let's go with like something steampunk. Uh, and this is their way to connect phrases. So it's not like individual words. Like if you say metal band, if you put it in quotes or something. Um, I noticed on this for being that didn't really help me at all. We're getting somewhere. <laughs> and again, um, 
So maybe at this point, we're kind of asking the, uh, I was asking you to do too much by kind of creating a background for it as well. Mm -hmm. So let's just try to get us a nice little, little space image. Do you ever define the um, aspect ratio or do you ever say like circle to get the um, design in a circle? I found out if I did it like in a circle, I would almost limit um, the images that I was creating. Because hmm. again, so when we get done with this, we're actually going to take it over into uh, Sketchbook Pro, which is what I use. It's basically the Android version of Procreate. Um, I use that to... Uh, turn it into a circle, essentially. Gotcha. Um, so again, we could try in a circle. And then what's, what I don't like about this is you'll get images sometimes that the edges of that circle is cut off. Hmm. Um, and at that point, you know, it's like, well, dang, that's a really cool image. <laughs> Man, I really wish I had the full circle. Yeah. Like these. Like, it would be nice to have this right here fully there instead of having, it's like, oh, okay, well, it's kind of cut off and I really like this image and I'll, I'll, I guess I'll just do without that. Mm -hmm. But it'd be nice to have a complete image. Yeah. I've also found that, at least in my experience, AI, it only knows so much. So if you're trying to do a lot with one thing, it just, it... Like it never existed before, so it really doesn't know how to put something together. It works exactly. really well if there is something that's existing that already exists that it can rift off of. Exactly. So like heavy metal unicorn, it's kind of you're kind of asking a lot a little bit. Yeah. Um, so for me, we kind of got like a I don't say amazing backgrounds uh, so far with just the uh, mushrooms in space, but. I definitely like this one and you can kind of play with it a little bit. And mm -hmm. so now let's try to go get us a unicorn now. So no gradient, no shading, no color, unicorn. Let's try rock band. Die Forge said, I wonder if you could use generative fill in Photoshop to complete those circles. Uh, I'm pretty sure you can, and you're using more AI. Um, but Photoshop is paid if you want to pay the Adobe overlords. Yeah. And <laughs> we, we've already talked about how, uh, I want to say how cheap I am, but, uh, if I can do it for free, I'm going to do it for free. Um, yeah. so this is what I love about AI is not only like, obviously, you know, it's a horse, it's got four legs, but it just, you know, it likes to spurt out. And this is what we're talking about. Like it only can do certain things. That like from where it's existing so <laughs> it creating this third arm out of nowhere it's like yes it's a unicorn horse but you asked for it to be playing guitar so we're just gonna pop this bad boy in here somewhere yeah um, you know it, it's quite funny when you first look at it, it's like oh yeah there's nothing wrong with it then you start looking at it, I'm like what the heck <laughs> <laughs> uh rock man so we'll also try maybe the coloring page because again we're here to try everything because again, it's AI. So it's like for me to say, I don't like using coloring page because I don't like the results. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe it will give me something that I'm looking for yeah. uh, to complete this total package. And this is what I like about AI too. It's, and that's, I wouldn't say I like it, but it's like kind of what, oh man, I got Chaz all over this. He can make this <laughs> awesome. <laughs> nice. Um, but again, let's talk about AI. And that, I wouldn't say worried about coming into this is because it is so random. And that's why like, I wasn't like trying to have a my own idea of what I wanted to create coming into this. It's the randomness of it, whether you're going to make it execute or not. And that's kind of what I wanted to show people too. It's like, hey, if you can't execute it, like then maybe it's just something you need to like alter it. And instead of like, again, going for that openness mind, going in with that open mind of like having something different than what you're going into. Mm -hmm. Because obviously a heavy metal unicorn might be something that we can't achieve exactly with all the free stuff. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I feel like we definitely got some ACDC unicorn going yeah. on. Right yes. Like, you not be heavy metal, but we got some punk rock. You know, that's that's like the classic heavy metal. It's not the new heavy yeah. metal, but yeah. 
Yeah, it's not, it's not your Norwegian death screaming metal. <laughs> um, so I, I am honestly, you know, kind of happy with these two images. Um, but I think we're going to go for a different background because again, talk about open-mindedness, this don't flow with the background that we're having with, uh, frolicking through the, uh, what was it? The mushrooms in space. <laughs> yes. Um, so I'm probably going to go maybe like a little, what you thinking, Dave, like a little, uh, little beach setting. Sure. Yeah. Why not? Beach, sunset. Um, let's go with digital art style too. And like I mentioned before, people think, you know, I mean, you can have be one and done. You can create something like this and just be done with it. But there, there's so much more tweaking and stuff that you can do to what you get for these that you'll obviously show. Mm-hmm. So I think of AI as an idea generator and an assistant. It's by no means the final and finished product, uh, but it it helps you get your ideas out there. And I know a lot of people, a lot of disc dyers don't call themselves artists. Um, so it's a, a good way to help get your ideas in, into reality. Exactly. Um, I think before I move on to the next step, we can always talk a little bit. Um, that's what kind of got me into disc dyeing for the most part. It was the fact that my hands couldn't make the beautiful pieces of art, uh, the actual images. Um, I got, I found out I'm really good at coloring inside the lines. <laughs> um, so, I mean, that, that's why I love stencils. That's why I love my cricket. Um, it cuts it out, you know, I say perfectly every time, but you know, everyone knows the cricket's a little temperamental. Um, uh, mm -hmm. but I love the fact that I'm able to, take something that I, I love and enjoy and actually plug it into a machine, creates it for me. And I just got to color inside the lines um, and I get to actually enjoy it. So yeah. that's always pretty cool. Yeah, totally. All right. So now we're going to go over to sketchbook and I make my image and my canvas size uh, 600 by 600. It was something I believe Keith, uh, kind of mentioned in one of like the Facebook groups, the disc golf tires or whatever, um, back when I first started and he just kind of dropped down. If you wanted to put things directly into cricket, uh, as a JPEG or whatever, uh, you always want to make sure the canvas size or like the image was 600 by 600. Cause that was a perfect eight inch circle almost every time. Hmm. So what I do here, uh, I guess on sketchbook, there's like a, uh, the radial symmetry. So it kind of makes it all. Like if I was to go in here and create, like drag a line, it would just kind of, because all over the place. That's how people kind, kind of make their uh, mandalas and stuff like that. But yeah. I use it because now I'm also going to get my circle. And I'm going to go ahead and create myself my circle for my disc. So now I know exactly where the image is going to cut off, where it's going to center up at. Uh, essentially, this is my disc. Um, mm -hmm. I guess on, what is it? Uh, whatever the program Cameo uses, it does it into a circle for you. Well, I use a Cricut. So another downfall of Cricut, I guess. Yes. Um, I feel like you're in a mixed, mixed thing because you're using Microsoft, but yet you use mm -hmm. a Cricut. Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> I love all brands that are cheap and free. Yes. I'm not a, uh, so what I do with the circle two on this layer, I then white out the background around outside the circle. Uh, Cause whatever images that are gonna come in here, if I just left it as that black outline, it would as exceed past the outline and it wouldn't look right. And you wanna see what it actually cuts off as. So, so quick question, is this program that you're using free? Um, I think it was five ninety nine or nine ninety nine when I bought it, like the Sketchbook Pro. But there is a free version of Sketchbook. Gotcha. Uh, it's just the things I could do with the Pro, which at this point I don't even remember because I was like three and a half years ago. Um, 
and I think I even bought it before then. I just didn't know I bought it. Um, <laughs> yeah, so it Sketchbook Pro nine ninety nine, and it's a lifetime membership. So cheap lifetime, all about. Yes. Um. So yeah, uh, fill in the background, and then now we're going to add our image. We're going to throw in our background image. Downloads. I got a lot of different folders. So we're going to go with our background image first. Again, so this is over top of the other layer. So it's going to not going to show through yet. So we now drop the circle on top. Boom. Does all the cut and erasing for me. So then we're going to go through and center it up, make sure it looks good. Bring it in or out. I like it. I mean, that's a good stencil just by itself. Yeah, exactly. So that's when I would, you know, maybe save this and, you know, use it for a different one. But we're going to plug in a unicorn now. Because why? Because we can. Because Chaz is awesome and requested it. May not get the, the mushroom galaxy, but we'll get there. So I want to play with this. Again, this is where it comes to kind of, you know, debating on where you want to put it, how you want to put it. Um, I'm going to make this unicorn replace the sun. So obviously that ain't going to work. So we're going to take our little magic wand tool. And get rid of all that junk. So all I did was just select the background to get rid of it. Um, so now we're going to go through, erase all these stars because we don't need all that. And again, there's multiple ways to do what you're doing now. This is just how you do it. Like you, I probably do it the hardest way because there's no. <sighs> There's never been anyone to teach me, correct me or anything. So uh, I just do it the way I do it. There you go. But yeah, you could use Procreate. You could use Photoshop. You could, hell, you could use Image Paint if you really wanted to. That's probably the equivalent to what I'm doing. I'll be honest, like Image <laughs> Paint, like, to be honest with you. But like, again, like I've just like discovered these things. And like where I discovered these programs was actually when I first got the Cricut and it wasn't even like for this time. We actually got it uh, from my wife and her shirts and stuff. And these are just kind of things I found on YouTube. I was like, hey man, I want to make something and I got to get it from point A to point B into the cricket. What do I do? And uh, going through and just kind of listening to everyone's like things that they use to edit things. It's just what I found. And paint, I don't think I ever would have thought about using paint because I'm like, it's not Windows 98. I don't think paint <laughs> exists anymore. Like, yeah. And, you know, at the end of the day, uh, there are some yeah. tires that use MS Paint still. Yeah, sounds about right. Um, so I think I could even go, like, they talk about like doing this the super easy way. Like, there's probably ways I can even go in here and uh, circle out this instead of me like erasing it. I guess I could probably even just go to make it like quickly. I could just fill this in. Ooh, that's the magic one. Oh, I'm also like a hyper detailed guy. So it's mm -hmm. like, I find the enjoyment in doing it like this, I guess. Yeah. So like, yeah, I mean, I could do stuff like that, but I definitely messed up and went over the sailboat. Mm -hmm. But the unicorn's going to cover that, cover that up anyways. So again, probably wouldn't be something I'd use. Not a world's greatest fan of this 
do you take into considerations of like, okay, this this detail is too fine, or these lines are too thin that it won't cut or work that you um, change anything or modify anything like that? Um, yes and no. Um, from experience, I know going through here, uh, like these little plants and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, if I run it through the vectorizer, then it usually picks it up and my cricket picks it up and knocks it out to be honest with you. Um, like even like these hairlines. So when I run again, run it through the vectorizer, uh, it kind of, I want to say like, it gets rid of all the blurriness mm -hmm. for me. Um, some things like, uh, yeah, I guess I'll pull up the picture real quick. Like these ones, I know for a fact this would be a pain to weed. Mm -hmm. And I know I'd probably lose these, these details right here. So I would go through and like, I would meticulously go through and like erase those and edit those if I wanted to use this. Gotcha. Um, but at the same time, it's like, well, you know, I'm not trying to put that much time into that. Mm -hmm. um, and there are people that will go out there and, you know, they do want to put the time into it because they find that enjoyment. But again, uh, I work with quantity for the most part. Um, so like high detailed, high shading, uh, those kind of things. I don't have time to do i guess like I'm trying to word it correctly i guess because i don't want to diminish what the people who do put that time and effort into it because it's absolutely freaking beautiful mm -hmm. uh, but you ain't you, yeah. you ain't got time for that yeah, yeah i mean being in the shop and then also like my forte is spin dies mm -hmm. so for the most part like i'm very used to that instant gratification because i can knock a spin die out and you know, relatively quickly. Um, so it's like, I can hit it, put the color on, it's fully saturated, glue mask, hit ready to go 45 minutes from beginning to end, that bad boy's done. If I just dedicate time on one disc. Um, yeah. yeah. And like, and like I said before, rarely is the AI image that you get, you know, going to work perfectly. I mean, it can, or you can put a lot more time into it. Like I said, it's just an assistant tool to get your ideas out and you could add your own personal touch to what was generated and go as crazy as you want. Yeah. Like this image again, like I said, I wouldn't be super excited, but if someone asked me for a unicorn playing on the beach, like I would send them a picture of this first and go for it. But <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that's kind of what I would do. But so now I'm going to go through actually and Let's go get a prompt that I would actually do on my own. And let's not go for an example off Facebook because <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not happy with that. All right. Um, so my favorite thing to do is circuits, mushrooms, uh, trippy. And again, so the words like trippy, I usually, that's when I get those crazy little, um, like robotic uh, designs that I've been doing. Um, hmm. I know that trippy also gets me the results of those like super wavy lines that you see like in space. Mm -hmm. um, so those kind of things, that's what I'll look up and use and kind of start. I have like, I used to have a file where like certain words gave me certain results and that's where I would kind of keep them saved. But like I told you, I think I have a group message with die dude and that's almost where I go back to now and like look at all my prompts that we've I've like sent him or he'll send me an image. I'm like, dude, what did you say to get that? Mm -hmm. And he's like, oh, you just gotta try this style, man. I'm like, oh, okay. So then it's like piece by piece, we're starting to try to figure it out. Um, yeah, I usually think it's pretty fun. Yeah. So crickets, go ahead. I was like, I've noticed that it doesn't like to do very, it's very good at like organic shapes, but anything like symmetrical and straight, it doesn't necessarily seem to do well. Um, at least for the mid journey stuff, unless you can prove me wrong, please prove me wrong. Like I was trying to do symmetrical circle shapes, not like mm -hmm. fractals, but kind of like fractals, but not like a Mandela, but kind of like a Mandela. Uh, say like the, um, 
uh, what is that? Huck Lab type logo. So, ironically enough, um, I did actually go and do. So I use this a lot and try to find some weird things. Um, I did actually put in TriFly to see like what it would create for me. Mm -hmm. And this is what I got. Which is funny, it actually popped up Huck Lab, but <laughs> <laughs> um, why is it not going over? Anyway, so so I, it would give me like when I say try fly, it would or be like rotating. Uh, these are some of the images that I would get. So you can kind of get I don't say super symmetrical, but I wouldn't also ask for symmetrical, I guess. Yeah. Um because you can get these. Yeah. Um, but as far as like the uh some of the other symmetrical stuff, like the mandalas. So I did circuitry mandala mm -hmm. or um uh what did I do? Sacred uh, sacred geometry is what mm -hmm. I put in. They get a lot of these which we're about to go do. Cause these are the ones that I, I enjoy the most doing. Mm -hmm. uh, I like that fine work detail stuff that I can play with that. You can just take a black and white image and throw it onto a stencil and it looked amazing. Um, I'm very big onto uh, objects that have cool flight or they look cool in flight. Yes. Well, the results that I've been seeing from the Bing image creator, I'm, Pretty impressed. Um, like I said, I use Mid Journey, and I think it can be better than Mid Journey. And if I'm not mistaken, mistaken, the Bing Image Creator uses the back end is Doll E. Uh, yeah, I believe so. Yeah. So that's a the free way to use Doll E. Otherwise, Doll E you can use by itself, but you have to pay for it. So like. Some of these, obviously, you're not going to get the full image, but we'll take that over. And I, I make that circle image and make it kind of work with these. So we'll take this one because this one has some some like fine detailed lines, uh -huh. especially inside the mushroom. Um, and I know I can get those to pull. Yeah. So I'm going to take that over. To sketchbook we're going to get rid of this uh abomination so i can't wait to watch this back later <laughs> <laughs> um so again we're going to go throw this bad boy in there and as much as i love to have the super dark black background um definitely not super necessary for this one because you're going to lose a lot of that mm -hmm. or a lot of the detail when you go to transfer it to your disc. And again, everyone knows black when it fades, it just turns into one giant blob. So we're gonna invert this. I feel like people at the AI company were like, why is everybody prompting mushrooms all the time? Oh man, because we can finally find trippy things, man. <laughs> um, so if y'all thought I did Sketchbook Pro the hard way, Wait till y'all see how I get to the final image in the cricket. David already already made fun of me. <laughs> like I said, there's multiple ways to do the same thing. Yes, yes, yes. Um, so again, me coming out here and being transparent about the way I do things um, is also going to help me learn and teach myself how to make this happen in probably 15 less steps. So, uh, so we're just going to save this. Uh, Save as the JPEG. So come with me. We're going to bring it to vectorizer.ai. And all this does for me is kind of clean up the image for me, where it would be kind of blurry just for me bringing it like from max size to full size to our min miniature size and all that stuff, bring it in and out. Um, So you're going to bring 
this back into Inkscape, and with Inkscape, you can trace that image, correct? Correct. And this is why I bring it to vectorizer. So the original image, you can see how blurry it is. And then over here, it obviously, it's not blurry. It's a lot mm -hmm. cleaner. So again, I'm giving Inkscape, because again, Inkscape would clean this up a little bit when I do the trace, mm -hmm. but the detail in the lines wouldn't be as crisp as if I took it, ran it through a vectorizer, didn't bring it over as an SVG, bring it over as a PNG. Again, probably the hard way to do it, but we'll figure that out. Um, and the way this is running now is uh, it's going to just, I'm giving it a cleaner image to trace. Have you ever tried running the image that you exported from uh, whatever software you used previously into an AI upscaler to upscale it two or four times, then bring it into Inkscape? I don't know what that is. <laughs> uh, there's a website where you can upscale images and it uses AI to make things crisper. Like you can scale up a smaller image, like what you're kind of what you're what this is doing in a way. Um, I use that if there's like a say a, a stencil that I found that I really like, but it's a low quality image. Mm -hmm. I upscale it two or four times before I vectorize it. Gotcha. Yeah, I no idea that existed. <laughs> now you do. <laughs> like I said, I've never I've never been corrected or done this publicly. So a lot of this, you know, like us basement disc golf tires, we uh yeah. we're we're roughing it. <laughs> uh so yeah, obviously we're gonna download this bad boy. And this is where like I guess people, you know, that's why I could go to like saving it as an SVG or whatever. Um, but again, I'm actually saving it as a PNG because I'm bringing it over to Inkscape to convert it to an SVG, but also trace it. Because I found out when I, at least on my Cricut, if I save it just as a straight SVG and bring it to Cricut, I also get like this extra spacing back here hmm. and like all that, like in the image. So that's how I get rid of it. What size does Bing save those images as when you create the... Those um it, it depends uh mm -hmm. it's usually something it's always different so like this is a it says 1024 by 1024 jpeg okay yeah and i'm trying to bring it down to 600 by 600 yeah because there's someone in the chat that says wouldn't cricket just trace it for you if you bring it in like that um Yes and no, because you got to do when you go to Cricut and you do like remove the auto background. Um, I've always had an issue and most people do too, is when like it re removes that background. It's also removing a little bit of that black line as well. Hmm. It's not like a crisp removal of your background, at least in my experience. So like upload. Let's do... So again, so like right here, it's how it's a little blurry and it's like not that clean, crisp black line anymore. Yeah. That, I mean, here it's not as dramatic because it also didn't take away the background inside the mm -hmm. circle, but that's also why I, I don't like it. <laughs> yeah. So basically you're bringing it into the vectorizer to, for all intents and purposes, upscale it. So you get those nice clean lines at a larger scale. So when you do trace it, you don't have any jaggies or any other weirdness to it. Correct. So then bring it over to Inkscape. Oh, that's not the, that's the old image. Grab it from downloads. Oh shit. Die Forge asks, is it worth paying a sub for a subscription fee for design space? I never have because I basically just I create everything outside of it and I just use science space to cut. Well, that's not, did I not save it from the vectorizer? I don't think you did. 
Yep, yep, nope, I did not. <laughs> There's your problem. Yeah, I was like, dude, where's it at? Don't do drugs, kids. All right. Um, also a downslide. Vectorize, Vectorizer.ai used to be free, but now it is no longer free. Yes. Um, but it is the best uh, thing ever to vectorize any rasterized image or any images that are pixel. It does an amazing job. Um, and I've used many, many different tools like Adobe Illustrator. I even tried Inkscape. Um, the vectorizer.ai does an amazing job. And I actually pay for that subscription. <laughs> I, I pay for mine too. Um, so I use what you would do if you went into Inkscape and used it. Um, you go to path, click on trace bitmap, and that's when it brings up this screen over here. Once you bring it up, that tool is always open, so you don't have to keep opening it. But if you just click on the image. Sometimes you get a preview down here. For some reason on my PC, I don't get the preview, but on my Surface Pro, I get the preview. It is what it is. Um, so you have brightness cutoff, and then you have edge detection. If you do edge detection, I think this is, and I'll show you, I believe this is the way it looks in Cameo, where it kind of gives you that, like the line on each side, mm -hmm. where if you do it, let's go brightness cutoff, which is where it works perfectly for Cricut, because I've noticed if you do the edge detection and you have the lines on each side of the one bold line, that's typically when the Cricut's pulling up that fine detail. Gotcha. So I do the brightness cutoff, I apply it, and then traces it for me. Nice, clean image for me. I don't see no blurriness on the lines. That's just how I get it. Uh, and then we're going to save that. And again, I have everything organized on OCD. So I have my SVGs down here. Saver. And then for the 15th time, we're going to open up Canvas uh, or Cricut. And then we're going to upload the image. Just think, guys, I'd, I'll do like 50 of these in one day. <laughs> <laughs> it is, too, this easy with the 25-step process. Hey, at a point, you kind of get quick with the hands. Yeah. The only thing that sucks when you run it through uh, Inkscape, it brings it back up. <laughs> out of that eight. So I bring it down to an eight inch circle. Uh, Die dude will hate me for this forever, but I, because I spin like a black border for the most part around most of my dies, because I like to make it look like a frame. Mm -hmm. um, if you do it at eight inches and cut an eight inch circle when you do it on the disc. And again, so maybe if I didn't take 30 steps to get here, uh, I would save my time here and actually use it on making sure my vinyl goes around the full uh, edges of my disc but uh, I do the eight inch circle because when you actually put it on with the vinyl it's perfectly on your disc and you don't have that excess that you gotta mm -hmm. uh, fold under your disc or worry about the seal messing up and you get a little bit of black line on the edge of your disc yeah. um, so I just make it flat on the disc and I just spin dye the edge black <laughs> nice um, and that's and I learned that trick I guess or I want to call it a trick so you know some people don't like it um, I had to do like 200 and like 50 stencils for like a local tournament. Jeez. And I was like, yo, how do I not do this? <laughs> so I was just like, man, if I can just have them at eight inches or 8.2 inches, uh, I can just go straight through it and never have to worry about crinkling the sides. And that saves me X amount of time per disc. Oh, what's going on here? There we go. So to center the disc, what is going on with the cricket? It's not the cricket. This, this, this is like a, like a good advertisement to not use cricket. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So stop. So again, I put, because I don't want the full eight inches. If I do like a mid range or something like that, I'll make my background circle 8.5. 
So we'll make everyone happy. So it goes over the full edge of the disc. Hmm. But I don't want the image itself to be fully around the edge of the disc. So that's still going to be on the inside, but this vinyl will protect it. Um, and then to make sure it's centered when I um, put it like on the disc, because I do disc on top of the vinyl, not vinyl on top of the disc. We'll save that debate for later. Okay. Well, I think we have to end this now. So thank you. Uh, and like bye -bye. <laughs> have a great night. Yes. Um, so I know some people use a circle, some, you know, to center up and everything, but I just use the cross because I feel like sometimes or free and for the most part, uh, it doesn't actually like rip the cross out, but it makes it small enough where I can see it through the, the light board when I'm putting mm. it, the disc down on it. Um, so I make it 0 0.049 is the width and because it's locked it does it on all sides once it goes down because cricket's awesome yes i'm on uh a short six zero zero one said design space has been bad since friday hmm. Dude, yeah uh so like i'll line up because i have like the the auto cutter mm -hmm. so i'll line up like 30 40 stencils at once so like that's my plan for the, like every Monday I go in and I load up my stencils for the week or for like the next two weeks. Um, and I'll just run, let it run and it'll auto cut and run auto cut. But I, yeah, I want to say last Friday or even I said, I maybe Sunday when I was working on it, um, it was super slow. I had like all my, uh, vinyls lined up and centered and everything. And then when I go hit play, all of them shifted like halfway off the mat and I didn't notice. So I come back like three hours later and it's, everything's like half circles but you've got to be kidding me hmm. yeah yeah um the other downside with using the cricket software is you need to have an internet connection i yes. found this out when i lost power it's like well i have uh some backup power or no i didn't have internet but i saw power it's like well can't go browse the internet i'm gonna go cut some stencils <laughs> nope no you're not <laughs> So I have and I will say some people use the Wi-Fi. I recommend not using the Wi-Fi for your crickets because if you if you're an hour and a half deep on a cut and you lose Wi-Fi connection, I promise you you're gonna throw something through the wall. <laughs> um so it, it finally shrunk down by plus size, and you can see how small it is. It's like stupid small. Um, and that's really the objective. It's so small you can't see it. At least not on the screen. <laughs> um, so you know, you just pull everything together, highlight it all. I center it. So one, it centers the stencil, but also centers that plus sign. And that's what I'm looking for when I go to put the disc on top of it with my laser. Um, we attach it. And then we make it. Nice. Uh, do you know, I just realized I don't have <laughs> a cricket at my house because it's at the shop. That's fine. I mean, we get the gist of it. It yeah. does its thing and you make it. Yep. And then you go through like the premium. So for me, and again, like everyone complains, what setting do you use or what do you do? So this cricket at the shop, I use, I think, washi tape. But my second one, uh, I have to use premium vinyl. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why. I don't know the difference. Um, I just know that one of them has a different pressure reading or maybe the way it's calibrated or anything like that it's i have to go in i think i've said it before on the pages uh where i've had to manually go in and actually change the pressure settings on each individual can, uh cricket that i have have you cleaned the blade is the blade old or old or new mm -hmm. um i've cleaned my blade i i bought like a 30 pack or like a 10 pack of blades when i first got my cricket so if i ever get like the feeling that it's not working i just immediately go and replace it or if it's I'll calibrate it now, uh, now that I know how to calibrate it and why why I'm supposed to be calibrating it. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, my blade is maybe six months old, if that. And the machines are both the same model? Both the uh, same exact model. Uh, oh. Bought maybe, uh, yeah, I say it, I bought them a year apart. That's crazy. Uh, do you use the same mats? Have you swapped the mats? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Yep, Great. I buy the uh, Cricut uh, light grip, so like the blue ones. Gotcha. Yep, huh. I use those. Well, actually, I use the 24 by 24. 
little secret hack. You can cut two stencils at once if you use a 24 by 20 or a 12 by 24. Yes. Nice. Cool beans. Um, does anybody have any questions regarding AI art and how to do that? <laughs> nope. Yeah, no. Nope. It's like, uh, let's see, Jory said, yay, more mushrooms. <laughs> oh, dude, I'll, yeah, I'll crank out the mushrooms here. <laughs> I've never calibrated my cricket and I didn't know that was a thing either. Yeah. So um, I was finding out because I, again, I bought the cricket not to do disc golf stuff. I discovered disc golf stuff because of the cricket. Um, I was making stickers and they were so miscut and misaligned when I was doing things. Um, oh, boy. <laughs> um, I would down and I would like, you know, run this page of like 100 stickers and by the time I would get done with it, almost like half of them were so off and off center that I'm like, dude, what am I doing wrong? There's no way. Like I watch all these people on YouTube knock out these stickers and it's perfect. Like how, how are their offsets not misaligned or where it's like the sticker at the center is like slightly tilted up. Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh, well, I just know from me using my machine for the last three years that uh, I know I have to adjust it this way to make no sticker number 89 perfectly yeah. cut I'm like look dude no 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 no. i was like there's no way and then you get further down the rabbit hole and they're like oh you're you can calibrate your machine and dude so it would cut and it would be like whatever line is the most uh like where the cut is closest to the line that it prints out because it does like a, a rectangle in the center and then it does like multiple rectangles in until it gets to the center and then it does uh different gauges of lines going up the left side and across the top and it's like which like number eight to letter f like are those the two that are where the cut is the most close to center and then mm -hmm. is the center square um cut perfectly yes yeah. or no and, like mm -hmm. you'd have to pick them and then it runs it through like you know five different tests you, uh, you can really go endlessly until um you're per you're fine with how it's being cut um and then eventually i did that and i was like oh my stickers are perfect now nice yeah um so yeah. for for the prompts do you have any other words that you'd like to use to get what you're looking for for stencil specifically um so i guess maybe like styles or like let's go with instead of trying to get a stencil, I can try to maybe recreate some of my like dojo design, like bag tags, or, like logos that I've been using, where I know some people maybe want to use it for maybe not a stencil creation for the most part. Um, sorry, my ADD is like kicking off really hard on these images. Um, cool. Right. Um, so like, again, you can use, I know people have asked about logos. Um, how can they get full color images? And that's where you really got to go into, I want to say detail, but let's go ahead and have some fun with it real quick. Yeah. You got to describe what you're looking for. And again, the hardest part is finding the words to describe what you're looking for. So if you know like right? a specific art style and you know that artist's name, that helps out a lot. But if you don't know that and you're trying to get the art style, it's like, how do I even describe something like this? Yeah. So you know, obviously my thing is dojo designs. Uh, uh, it's all Asian inspired. I'm part Japanese. Like I, it's why I love going with the samurai look and everything that I'm doing. So when I was running images or prompts to do my stuff, I was thinking when I think of Japan, what do I envision? Like obviously people with oh, anime, Japanese anime, like that's, that's what it is. Um, I always think of like, cherry blossoms, bright neon lights, uh, like really colorful sunsets. And for some reason, I always think of like a winter wonderland almost. So that's kind of what I would put in if I'm going for what I was doing for my images. Hmm. So we're going to do a, let's go logo. And for me, 
Dojo designs is easy to put in for wording because they're real words. Mm -hmm. um, if we, me and you know Jeff talked about it, uh, die dude, that's not a real word. Like it's yeah. two words together, but like die dude is not a real word. Mm -hmm. So, or, you know, Ivan, and it's just people that I've talked to with AI. So that's why I'm bringing your names up. Um, Dialicious. It's hard to get those words to actually pop up and generate because they're not real words. Um, so like we talked about earlier, if you feed it information or you're trying to get a logo or not a logo, but like an image that doesn't exist, it's, you're going to have to go, like, I only get 15 shots. You're going to have to go 15 times. Mm -hmm. more than likely or you go past your free limit and you have to just sit there and wait until it creates something yeah so um mike who's oh i'm sorry i can't see your last who you ask? yes he said any keys to getting around some of the blocked prompt stuff uh um, no <laughs> <laughs> i mean well, you can but like look i was look i was looking up um for a butcher he wanted uh, a cow or like a piece of meat or like ribeye hanging off a hook let me tell you how hard it is to get the images meat on a meat on hook or a butcher hook and even though they're real actual physical uh images you, it dude you can't it it gave me some of the weirdest things it would give me like fish hooks wouldn't give me actual butcher hooks and if it would give you an image it was like two yeah i know the ai companies it's almost it's getting to the point where it's more regulated than the gun industry where they try to make sure that there's no bad things per se like any you know photography yeah, or anything they have they literally hire people to enter prompts to get around the box so they know to avoid like to ban those props like that yeah. those are actual jobs there there are some sites that you can generate some stuff yeah but I can only see that being going as far as it. I don't see it. I see stuff like that being shut down faster than just regular AI at some point. You know what I mean? Mm. Like the sites that are allowing you to break the prompts and break the rules are probably going to be the things. That's why they have people hired to figure out how to get around it so they can shut it down. So yeah. like I, in my mindset, I wouldn't want to use. I don't know. Like I wouldn't go that way knowing that 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 passageway could be shut off at any moment in time yeah. um or i would i wouldn't want to be even though there's millions of using it i wouldn't be one of the people feeding into the reason why that program i'm using gets shut down mm -hmm. um it's kind of where i look at it i guess and like i've never used bing and i don't know what limitations they have on there if it's they're more strict than uh some other stuff but i know mid journey you can get some interesting stuff but obviously mid journey has um protection in the place they'll say hey you can't use this because of you know this word or whatever yeah oh well, yeah what was it uh uh dixon space i think is what uh i was requested to make tonight <laughs> um i think we got wiener dogs in space <laughs> there's what go. we ended up coming with <laughs> yes but that was a mid journey uh journey design that was not a being free design uh check we're gonna have fun with this one someone said that image to go is a good site for upscaling or vectorizing and the site that i use to upscale smaller images it doesn't vectorize it but upscales is upscale.media mm. and uh i don't do a whole lot with that so like your first three are free but man it's crazy the results they can get it's like All right i mean i don't i don't know how you'd hold the sword like that but well, you know, it's just, uh, it's resting on his uh, side. Uh -huh. just propped up. Uh, I'm just entering stuff now to have fun to see what we can get. Dialicious. In the chat, I guess. Dialicious asks, can you edit words if not spelt correctly? 
Um, so with fonts, I've all I've always learned that yeah, you might as well just go and create your own. Yeah. Like when it comes to the wording. Um because dude, I even like with Dojo, like here it's like it really it's like D O I Q. <laughs> like um yeah, you can interpret that as like dojo, or you can kind of go play with it. If you have good like editing skills, uh, you could essentially like in Sketchbook, I could go through and they have like a color match option where I could go ahead and color match that blue in the queue and round it off myself by hand mm -hmm. and finish that and then go by hand and erase it. And you can edit it and color match with it. But yeah, there's a few things that AI is not great at. Uh, one is hands or fingers. Uh, the other is words. It, it is it is getting better, and there are some AI tools that are really good at words, but for the most part, in general, they suck at that. Mm -hmm. Coming to a bag tag near you. Watch out, guys. <laughs> Saw it first. Live. Yeah. Saw it live. 2025 bag tags. They're coming. <laughs> um, trying to think of anything else that like, I kind of do to... So apparently I do things the long way. So um, I'm glad though, at the same time, like I can't wait to go look at like the other things. Yeah. Of I, how I'm doing this completely the long way. I'll, um, I'll probably have to do a video of how I do it. And at anybody else, I would love to see how you create your um, stencils from the AI images. Cause again, there's multiple ways to do it and you know, some people have certain software than others, and some people know certain software than others. So if you have any ways that you've done something, please share that because I would love to see it. I know you would love to see it as well. So yeah. And if anybody has any more questions. Or just want to talk. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe or who's to teach me now? You can go to chat GDP and ask for Give me a list of questions to ask. <laughs> right. Have AI generate the questions. Um, I mean, shoot. If anybody has questions about my spin dies, I guess you could ask about that too. <laughs> That's probably the most information I have to offer. <laughs> um, what kind of beard oil do you use? Well, let me tell you what I use. I use lit beard oil. It is a Wisconsin and veteran-based company. I thought, dude, I thought we were going for a plug. I thought you were about to do like this full like manscape plug <laughs> that they do. No, but if you do want to sponsor me, that's perfectly fine. <laughs> um, I use what is it? Uh, I'll be honest with you, I don't know. My barber just gives it to me. <laughs> um, but I've been to the barber in a while, as you can tell. My hair's a little, a little funky. So, yeah, my friend owns that company. So, man, I should get like an affiliate code from him. Damn it. <laughs> I need a bottle. I just ran out. Nice. Uh, Travis Frake said, Curve on iPad is a great vectorizing app. They have free or paid. Oh, yeah. Um, there was another app that I, on the what iPhone. What if you don't have iPad? Well, then you're just not cool. Yeah, dude, I have a Surface Pro, man. I, I, I'm Android for life. There's nothing wrong with that, except everything. Yeah, well, so is putting the vinyl on top of your disc. <laughs> All right, and we're done. <laughs> we're done. I, dude, I, I want to get off my screen, but I know I can't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. There, there was another, um, it was an iPhone-specific app that was pretty good at uh, vectorizing stuff, if that's all you had. My wife, she has an iPad, but it's such an old iPad. Like, I think only Gen 1 oh, Apple Jesus. pins work with it. Yeah. But even then, it's kind of like touchy. Right on. Um, yeah. Cool beans. Well, um, I think this is a good place to end, unless anybody has any last-minute questions, or if you, know, you have anything else that you'd like to say, any parting words of wisdom. Uh. Don't ever be scared to go public with how you do things the long way because someone's <laughs> going to teach you how to do it the fast way. Yes. Um, Humility. But I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm okay. And I was 
I'm pretty sure I do things the long way. I'm pretty sure I've actually talked with I do a lot and I do do things the long way. Um, but that's uh, also why I do spin dies. Nice. Those aren't my forte. Well, not forte. They're not my main, my main style. Yeah. <laughs> so again, with AI art, I know it can be very polarizing and a lot of artists do not like it. Um, my personal philosophy is AI is here to stay um, and it's better to learn how to use it rather than get left behind. And it's not an all be all. Think of it as a helper or tool. It's not necessarily copying other artists because all art is a derivative. Like us humans, we look at other artists for inspiration to see how we can incorporate their style into our style. And sometimes as artists, we mimic their style. And what AI does is you feed it all this stuff and it 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 just rips off that. It doesn't necessarily rip it off. It's a derivative of the work and that's what all art is. Um, so it again, it's a tool to help you. I think it's a great tool. And the prompts itself, the prompt engineering is an art form in itself. Um, so yeah, that. That is my thought on that. Yeah, AI is definitely something that's going to stick around forever. Uh, I don't definitely, like you said, don't see it going away anytime soon. Uh, and that's why I keep practicing with it and trying to get better and better with it and get the best results I can and learn and teach myself how to edit it to make it look better. Yes. And with AI in general, just like any tool, it can be used for bad and evil. Um, so use it for good and learn and understand how it works because you're going to be seeing a lot more AI images just in general and knowing how it works, you can get a better idea and pick out like, okay, this was AI generated because, you know, it has, you know, extra fingers or it just doesn't quite look right. It's got two left hands. Yeah. So, all right, guys. Well, um, Thank you for teaching us how to do that. And until the next clinic, we'll talk to you guys later. And I got to say my slogan, uh, find your line, craft your peace. All right, guys, take care. Bye. <laughs>